Hey everyone, this is Savish from the channel Al Muqaddima, and today I'm going to show you the family tree of the Ottoman Sultans. I'll be using Matt's Asian Royal Family Trees chart, which is available as a poster from the website usefulcharts.com. The Ottoman Empire started in what is today Turkey, but eventually expanded to include Egypt, Iraq, and Arabia on one side, and Bulgaria, Ukraine, and Hungary on the other. In this video, we'll be looking at every Ottoman ruler from the foundation of the dynasty in the 14th century all the way down to the fall of the dynasty after World War I. We'll even address the question of who would be the Ottoman Sultan today. So the Ottoman dynasty is shown in the color red here. The dynasty began with Osman, but before we talk about him, let's talk about the Middle East in general before the rise of the Ottomans. After the death of Prophet Muhammad, Muslims had various caliphs. First, there was the Umayyad dynasty, and then the Abbasid dynasty. But slowly, they declined in power and became figureheads. At that point, in the 11th century, Persia was taken over by a group of Turks from the Eurasian steppes called the Seljuks, and the Abbasid caliphs became puppets at their hands. It was the Seljuks who defeated the Byzantines in the Battle of Manzikert in 1071. After that, they moved a considerable number of Turks into Anatolia. But over time, the Seljuks themselves declined in Persia. But an offshoot of the dynasty survived in Anatolia, which was called the Sultanate of Rome. This means the Sultanate of Rome because the area they ruled over was previously ruled by the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire. In the 13th century, the Mongols invaded and the Sultanate of Rum disintegrated, with many tribes rising up to carve out as much land as they could. One of those tribes was the tribe of Bayasman. He ruled a very small realm, so he cannot be called a king or emperor or sultan. His title is usually Bey, which simply means lord. However, he supposedly had a famous dream, which predicted the rise of his descendants. I should also point out that his mother, Halima Khatun, was actually a great-granddaughter of the last Sultan of Rum, so there's an important connection between the two major Turkic dynasties through her. Osman was called Ottoman by the Greeks and it's from that version of his name that we get the word Ottoman. The start of the dynasty is usually put at 1299. Osman was succeeded by son Orhan, who expanded the realm further. He married a Byzantine princess, Theodora, with whom he had a son who's not on this chart. That son married another Byzantine princess. Orhan conquered Gallipoli and put the first Ottoman footprint in Europe. His son Murad I expanded the young Sultanate further into Europe. He died during the Battle of Kosovo. His son Bayezid I, the Thunderbolt, tried to take Constantinople but couldn't. He was later defeated in the Battle of Ankara by Timur the Lame, or as I call him over at my channel, Timur the Jerk. He was captured and the empire broke apart, but was slowly put back together. Murad II consolidated the empire and abdicated in favor of his young son, Muhammad or Mehmed II, in 1444. But he was called back two years later to lead the army against a crusading army at the Second Battle of Kosovo. After he died, Mehmed II came back to power. He boldly decided to do what no one had been able to do. He decided to conquer Constantinople. He did that in 1453. He conquered Constantinople, made it the new capital and took the title of the Conqueror or Muhammad al-Fateh. His son, Bayezid II, is famous for having accepted the Jewish refugees who were kicked out of Spain along with the Muslims. Then, after a civil war, his son Salim Yavuz, or Salim the Grim, ascended to the throne. He expanded the empire into Asia and Africa. He conquered Syria, Arabia, Mesopotamia, and Egypt. In Egypt, the Abbasid Caliph was a figurehead, from whom Salim took the title of Caliph, and he became the first Ottoman Caliph, also the first Caliph who wasn't from Prophet Muhammad's tribe. His son and successor was the famous Suleiman I, or Suleiman the Magnificent, or Suleiman the Lawgiver. He's famous for his rivalry with the Habsburgs, especially Charles V, another great monarch of Europe. He's also famous for falling in love with his concubine Roxolana, who was known as Horam Sultan. He broke from Ottoman tradition and married her. Horam became a powerful woman in her own right at the palace. 
Suleiman reigned for a long period of time and had his son Mustafa killed because he was afraid that Mustafa was plotting against him. Suleiman reigned over the Ottoman Empire at the peak of its power. He was succeeded by Salim II, the son of Rum Sultan. Suleiman's daughter Mehrima was married to perhaps the most famous Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire. Grand Vizier was sort of like the Prime Minister. It was actually during the reign of Murad III that the empire controlled the most area, but it had some serious problems at that point. The next significant sultan was Ahmed I who built the Blue Mosque in Turkey. Up to this point, you can see that succession was going nicely from father to son. That's because unlike European monarchies, the Islamic ones had a lot of heirs, due to polygamy being the norm. Whereas in European dynasties, often the king would die without a male heir, causing a crisis, the Ottomans usually had a few too many heirs, who would also cause a crisis in the form of a civil war. To avoid this, the Ottomans adopted the tradition of fratricide. After the death of the reigning sultan, his sons would try to secure power. Whichever one came out on top would kill his remaining brothers. The dynasty hence was pretty truncated. Ahmed I was the sultan who decided to do away with this tradition, probably because he was young and didn't have any children of his own, and if he had died, he wouldn't have had any heirs. It was during his reign that we saw the rise of Qasim Sultan, the most powerful woman in the Ottoman court. She rose as the imperial consort or Hasiki Sultan and became the favorite concubine of Ahmed. However, she was banished after his death. Ahmed had died fairly young. After him, his brother Mustafa I became the Sultan. At this point, we start seeing why fratricide, while disgusting, was a brilliant way to ensure stability. Mustafa was overthrown in the favor of Osman II, Ahmed's son, but then he was killed by his janissaries and Mustafa was installed again. Then two more sons of Ahmed ruled one after the other. First, Murad IV, who was very young at the time. Qasim became the regent and effectively ruled the entire empire. She famously attended court from behind a curtain, an unprecedented move in the Islamic world. Even when Murad came of age, she still continued to rule with him, if not in his place. When Murad died, he was succeeded by Ibrahim, who is generally considered to have been mentally imbalanced. He was unpopular and eventually banished Qasim, who then plotted and had him killed. His young son, Mehmed IV, was installed, whom Qasim controlled as well, until his mother intervened and plotted to have Qasim killed, which she succeeded in doing. For various reasons, the empire was declining. It was losing wars and territory. Various grandsons and great-grandsons of Ahmed came to power during this era, until we come to Mahmud II. Mahmud led various reforms to the Ottoman Empire. Most noticeably, the clothing of the Sultan and the officials changed. The Ottoman dynasty then split into two directions, with Abdul Majid I and then his brother Abdul Aziz. It was Abdul Majid's son, Sultan Mehmed V, who oversaw the empire during the First World War, when the Ottoman Empire sided with Germany and lost. At this point, Mustafa Kemal founded the Republic of Turkey. The Sultanate was abolished in 1922, but the Caliphate remained until Abdul Majid II was exiled in 1924 ending the Ottoman Empire and then the Islamic Caliphate. As you can see on this chart, there are various different lines of the Ottoman dynasty that still exist. So if the empire still existed, one of the members of those lines would be the Sultan. The family is now called Osmanoglu and has members all over the world. They were banned from entering Turkey, but that ban was later lifted. The current head of the house is one Dundar Ali Osman. He was born in 1930 and would most likely be succeeded by his brother Harun Osmanoglu. The head of the house is usually the oldest member of the dynasty, so it can go back and forth between the surviving lines of the family. So, that was the family tree of the Ottoman dynasty. If you're interested in learning more about Islamic history, check out my channel Al Muqaddima by clicking the link in the description. Or if you want to buy the poster shown in the video, you can head over to usefulcharts.com. Thank you for watching.